I wasn't supposed to be the one to, to do it because uh, I don't really know much in the film industry. But I'm sure if I turn it to become, uh, into a discussion, maybe you would help me to, 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 to do this. I'd like to acknowledge my senior. You said I'm your mentor, so that's one, my, one of my mentors. And then the, the other one is Mr. Yao Beku, Mr. Yao Boachi. They were people that taught us where to put our tripods and our cameras. And uh, today we are here. Right. So the, the question, is a filmmaker in Ghana an artist or a business person? Um, I'll, I'm going to try to explain it, but I believe this is a discussion that is like which comes first, the chicken or the egg? which other people have been uh, uh, de uh, debating. And we, the filmmakers, this is our chicken and egg uh, situation. Are we really business people or we are film people? And I'll try as much as possible to show that it is not only a discussion that is here in Ghana, but it's worldwide. Uh, people in Hollywood, all over the world, are always confronted with whether uh, they are filmmakers or they are artists. So here's a quote from somebody. He says, I see film as a business and pity anyone who regards it as an art form. So straight away, we are drawing the lines, okay? Another person says, we don't make movies to make money. We make money to make more movies. So there's a whole debate going on uh, about the film as an art or business. When we came to NAFTI and we were students, we, we, we thought we loved the art of filmmaking. That was the reason why we came here. I came here in 1989 and um, completed in 1992. At that time, there was only Ghana Films, GBC, Videomat. If they do not employ you, that you are officially unemployed. There's nothing you can do. But the love for the film industry or the filmmaking was what brought us here. So friends who went on to read law and other uh, uh, subjects were always laughing at us because they didn't know what we were about. Okay, And uh, until some of them visited and found out that we were sitting in air-conditioned classrooms. They, did, they didn't envy us at all. Well, so, 92, I finished NAFTI, and fortunately at the time, 1990, when Ramesh and um, Dankema and co completed NAFTI, they, uh, I think Rame, uh, Dankema them went to Lintas. So that was where there was an op another opening for film people to be doing to get into advertising. So when I completed, I went into advertising. And uh, I don't think I regret it because I learned so much working in advertising. But one of the things I learned, and was around the first week that I was there, was this art director called uh, Jean-Marie, who was screaming at the top of his voice about something that he did that the account managers messed up and for him that was a crime and whoever messed it up must be shot so he was screaming okay and i thought is this the world i'm coming in and if someone like jean marie should be screaming every day i'll be in trouble and then um jake comes in and says that he's talking from the left side of his brain then i was like wow what is the left side of the brain and who talks from the right side of the brain? Okay? So, then I realized that there's something that they say about we creative people that we are from the right side, we speak from the left side of our brains. That um, we think creative, so everything is on the left. We're always doing things the other way. And then, those people who wear suits, we were always calling them suits because they are the account managers. They are from the, they speak from the right side of the brain. They are looking at the numbers. 
They want to know how much money we are making. We despise them as creatives because they ask for things that we don't want to answer. Okay? We, we feel that we are gods. We are creative people. So who the hell are you? And the thing that really annoys us the most is that when we do the work, they are the ones that go to take the credit. Okay? And then they wear their suits and look sharp. So there was always this war going on in the advertising industry. And um, I'm quite, I mean, I'm not surprised that it's also happening in the film industry now. Are we artists or we are business people? The Ghana film industry was established. If we are talking about Ghana, I was thinking that we should talk about the Ghana film industry a bit. It was established by government. It was mainly to produce films that propagate the ideas of government. And that was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's vision. So Ghana Films was established and it was the best in south of the Sahara. Not even in Nigeria or anywhere else. It was so beautiful. We had huge sound stage. We had everything that we needed to make films. The only thing is that we did, they were not empowered to make films that were art or that were commercial. So they were making propaganda films or more documentaries than feature films. And I'm sure I can count on my finger the number of films that were produced, uh, feature films that were produced. Uh, who remembers some of them? I'm sure I am in all. Hmm? Who remembers? I told you so. Boy Kumasenu. I think it was the first feature film ever made. And uh, which one? Hmm? You see? We can't even remember them. <laughs> but the thing is that a few feature films were produced as compared to over 900 documentary films that were produced. So, um, the objective of setting up Ghana film industry really wasn't, if you look at it, it wasn't really to establish a, a, a thriving film industry because most of the people there were paid by government. They were more or less civil servants and uh, they go on strike. I remember seeing one before when a crazy director locked up himself and uh, Mr. Hesse in Mr. Hesse's office and the people were banging the door begging him to open the door and leave the old man alone. That was um, what was going on. And, um, but then Ghana Films was the place for us. Apart from NAFTI, it was the home for filmmakers. So we were always, um, you know, people were, we were always going there. And then the emergence of people like uh, Mr. Kwanza, they were the private independent filmmakers who got a lot of support from, from Ghana Films. So they used their equipment, they used their personnel and all that to produce films. Also, Mr. Kinam Pao, Atuyani, Tom Ribeiro was more or less a staff of uh, Ghana Films, the same as Mr. Hammer and those people who uh, worked there. Now, then we moved into an era, at that time, I forgot to, to, say, uh, to tell you, we had a black and white film lab in uh, Ghana films. And so films, and films generally were shot on celluloid. It was a huge, huge, huge thing to do, to shoot a film. So someone like Mr. Kwanza had to more or less mortgage his uh, wife's father's house in order to raise the money to make the film. So it was a huge capital intensive thing. You can't easily, uh, uh, produce film. So just about three people on their own managed to do that. And I heard Mr. Kwanza collapsed twice on set. When the bank that was supporting him withdrew their support, he ended up in hospital because it's like it was almost uh, this thing. Then film, uh, video came. And video actually demystified film production and distribution in Ghana. He made it so easy because all you had to do was people were just buying camcorders and shooting. And then we had lots of video centers around Ghana. 
Then we also had people who were already showing, distributing films, like showing films in the cinema houses, like the HMs, the Haki films, and all those people who had something to do with film, but in the past, based on distribution, mainly distribution, distributing Chinese films and Indian films, also felt they could do, make films, so they started shooting films, yeah? Then, we had people like Mr. Atuyani, I think the first time I ever went on a film set was on a set called uh, uh, The Last Show, and Mr. Yawachi was the AD, oh? <laughs> And that must be in 1984 or 85, yeah. And uh, I was a young student, secondary school student, and then I went to see Mr. John Williams and Lula Everett, Everett, yeah? Uh, this thing. But that was the first attempt to shoot a feature film on video together with Mr. Alan Jima, but it didn't really work out. And I, I don't, have not seen the finished film. But GFIC also noticed the importance of video invested in equipment and then they started showing and also producing some of those films. Then we got into the digital age. Those days we had, it was all tapes. So we were shooting on uh, VHS, Super VHS, Betacam. I don't think any of you have heard about Umatic and those things before. But those were the things we were working with. And there were very few cameras equipment in town. Remember, we used to line up to edit. <laughs> you know, like you wait in line. And when it's 10, 11 o'clock, that's your turn to start. And then when you hit render, it says eight hours. <laughs> you have to wait for eight hours. Yeah, but that, that was what happened. And then we had the um, digital age. We, we now had this um, revolution of young people presenting films with good scripts, good acting skills, good production values, and all these things are like fresh stuff coming in that we never had when we were dealing with celluloid. We used to work together. <laughs> right. So really, coming back to the question that are we really artists or business people? Do we think from the left of our brain or we think from the right of our brain and I was thinking about it and I said it could be true because it depends on where you start from most of us artists or artists we get an idea okay and then we work through it to the end of the process so that's like from the left huh? or the right here for me or is it the left there? Okay. Whichever way, to the other way, so you can see the arrow going, the one down, going this way. And then the business folks are asking certain questions. They want to know what the end result is going to be. And then they work backwards to the beginning of the project. So they are the ones that I, I can see are thinking from the other side of the brain. Now, there's, I looked for certain, uh, you know, like how we work, the artist and the business people. And I think that um, these few pointers can show it. Artists get ideas first and they start working. The business person looks around for what is popular. I'm sure you know some time when a certain film was made with about five minutes of something in it, everybody started shooting. And you realize the people who were going in that direction were more of the business people. We have artists are consumed with the idea. They can't sleep. It's like you are pregnant. You have to deliver. The business person gets consumed with the end result. How much money are we going to make? Okay, through much effort, the artist brings his work into the world, right? And through much effort, the business person brings out something he or she knows will get attention from people. So his objective is more or less the people, and the other one is about him satisfying himself, 
or giving birth to his idea. You know, artist tweaks, bends, does everything so that he can be proud of what he's presenting. But a business person tweaks and does everything so that the people can be proud of what he has, he's giving them or they can turn, get their attention. The artist retreats to study. After it all, he retreats to study what appeals to him. So he's thinking about himself. But then the business person thinks uh, or studies what appeals to people. So you see that it's the same thing, but they are all looking at it from different angles, the right and the left. And then the artist sees his or her work as an expression and judges its success on how many people get his drift. But the business person is seeing his work as a product and his success is in how many people have come to watch and how much money he has made. So those are the two uh, ends of the, the, is it the dichotomy or something? Okay. <laughs> now is a filmmaker, a business person, and a, an artist. Well, I also looked at the pros and cons. Okay, and I picked up some stuff from people. Some of you, uh, we, we, if you uh, subscribe to some of these uh, film magazines or newsletters on the internet, you get some of these things. So, Rob Hardy says that it is now, perf he says, filmmaking doesn't have to be a business. That it is now perfectly acceptable to treat film as a personal or collaborative for effort, okay, art form done for its own sake. Why? Because there's affordable digital technology that has changed everything, okay? We have online funding. Distribution has changed the game. Online funding and distribution. Recently, there was a film, Kojo, The Burial of Kojo. The guy got to a stage and he did a crowdfunding. He put up um, his um, pitch and people were donating money to make, help him make the film. So it means that if you have a good project, you may not have to go and beg a producer to make the film. So that's why he's saying that it's no longer business. Um, uh, you, we can still call it an art. We're treating filmmaking, mm, treating filmmaking as a business stifles creativity. That's what it says. No limitation to focus on sheet, uh, shooting feature films. So, I mean, if you don't see it as an art form, so a commercial venture, it means that you can shoot what appeals to you. You can be a documentary filmmaker, whatever appeals to you. And there's no pressure to put up with working on projects or with people one does not like. I am sure Mr. Jai understands the last one where you put up with people that, <laughs> that really drive you up the wall. But you have to keep quiet and keep smiling. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. So the drawback is um, if you choose to see film as um, an artistic venture, the drawback is that you have to find something else to do uh, to make a living, especially if uh, you are not a rich person. You have to find some. And then you have to f fit filmmaking into your normal routine. So it means you do something else like you do galamse and then <laughs> you do film. One may have a hard time finding collaborators because you, you, you tend to make your films at the time that suits you, not at the time, every time that you feel like doing it. Okay, so that's a downside according to Rob Hardy. There's this guy called Don Simpson. I don't know if you've heard of um, Jerry Brock, Brockheimer, the one that did the Bad Boys videos, those, that top, um, one of the biggest film producers, his partner, Don Simpson. He said, we have no obligation to make history. We have no obligation to make art. We have no obligation to make a statement. Our obligation is to make money as filmmakers, <laughs> okay? So, 
that is his point and that takes me into somebody else's uh, uh, issue or, or submission uh, this is Gabriel Mura he says that the economies of the film industry is still complex and I believe if you look at the processes of making film whether we are in the third world or wherever you are even if you are doing it on a very small uh, equipment and all that the process is still complex okay distribution contracts if you even happen to make the film and you want to have a distribution contract it covers so many channels so many things that you still need a lot of help in order to get this thing done so there's ancillary, reven ancillary revenue cannot be ignored there are other channels you make a film, it's shown on TV, the next thing you notice is in copied by people and it's in so many places. The media still sees the box office as the main criterion in determining a movie as a hit. So really, uh, even the, the media is conspiring against we the artists. Okay? Artistic excellence and technical proficiency are usually ignored. Awards are welcome for the most part, only if it, is, it brings money. The career of directors and artists largely depend on marketability of their works. So that is that gentleman's uh, submission. So is, this the f uh, is the filmmaker in Ghana really an artist or business person? For me, I feel that we do not have a very thriving industry to produce filmmakers on each side of this divide okay so we do not have such a huge industry that we can say these people are purely artists and these are uh, business people most filmmakers in Ghana are more like independent artists who produce their work and hope to make money that is how I feel the structures do not guarantee box office success no matter how commercially viable productions are I feel that you know, when, 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 if we have an industry, it should be possible, people are able to pre-test even scripts to the point that they know what they need to inject into these scripts in order to bring the commercial value to their production. We do not really have that. They are able to measure the expected success of the film ahead of its production, knowing the many variables that they have to add into it. The artists, the locations and all the stuff that they need to put in they are able to calculate them and give themselves an idea of how much money they will be making and with that they are able to conf uh, talk to bankers and other investors who looking at these proposals can say we are putting in this much knowing that we are going to get this we don't really have that now so while the Nigerian film industry is benefiting from government support, the Ghana film industry is yet to see any tangible result. For me, we've already, I mean, we had an infrastructure that was built purely for filmmaking and we sold it. And so right now, I don't know where we are. The Ghana has very few filmmakers who are both artists and business people. I think that the syndrome of being wanting to be the biggest fish in the small pond is one of our bane in the film industry. There are many business persons who are making films, but not uh, clear, but clearly not good at it. Okay, when you go out, you see lots and lots of people making films. The chaff is far more than the really good films that we make. There are many film artists trained with requisite skills, but not good at the business aspect of filmmaking. So we have people who are artists who are really good. We have people who are business people who are really good at their business, but we are not looking at each other in order to tap from the strengths of each other to make the film. What is needed is an ecosystem of film artists and business people working together. If you look at this organogram, you would see that there's um, a place for business people and also a place for artists. Now, Steve Jobs says what? 
great things are never done alone, but done by one person. They are done by a team of people. And I think that is a very uh, important message. One thing common to both artists and business people is that we have ideas. Business people also have ideas. Artists also have ideas. It is not okay to be an artist with a business goal, okay? And it's not okay for the conception of art to be driven only by business goals. So if you have business goals, what is working? What is popular? I'm waiting to see what is popular so I'll make my film. It's possible that it will take you forever. You will not be able to make the films. Filmmakers are not homogeneous. There are many people seeking for immortality through art. Okay, they want to make a film that would immortalize their name, make them Eisenstein. Eh? And there are many seeking for immortality through money. Okay, so that is my presentation. Thank you very much. I think this is too small. We are being too... <laughs> Ivan, please don't run away. No, we can give you water and, and sit down. I want to acknowledge the presence of um, the rector of NAFTI. Welcome, sir. Welcome. <laughs> You know, NAFTI is a school that has um, a lot of special, not in the sense of special education, but um, very important people. If you dare do acknowledgments, you would miss some people. So I'll just do the rector, and that will be all. I'll take some few questions, and um, we can move on to the next stage. So maybe three questions, or four, two from women and two from guys. So two questions for Ivan and then we'll do the next session. Yes. Any question? Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir, for that wonderful presentation. Um, I've been studying you from behind for a very long time. And I've discovered that you've been able to blend the two effectively because I know you are a filmmaker or an artist. I'm over here. <laughs> I know you're an artist, but on the business side too, you've done very well for yourself. I mean, in all modesty. So what is the secret? How are you able to blend the two to be able to be an excellent filmmaker and also a very good businessman? Um, it's a very difficult thing. Eh? I... Um I said earlier in my presentation that I worked at Lintas, which uh, is an advertising agency. And um, so I studied a lot. Uh, and in advertising, you ha must even know your results before you, you deploy the money. So I learned a lot there. And uh, the other thing too is that I'm uh, always learning, uh, you are reading. Um, I don't think I, I think that in the business side, I must have done a little bit better than the film side. I'm now trying to come back to the film side. So it's not that I'm good at both. <laughs> I don't think so. Ivan, on a, on a very light note, does that mean that if we should examine your brain now, it's probably crossed, so you have the left and the right somewhere in between? Yeah, yeah. it's true. I sometimes look at myself in the mirror and wonder where my... <laughs> Good evening. My name is Koba. Um, my question is, in Ghana, must a filmmaker be an artist and a businessman at the same time to be successful? All right, so we will start from slide one, or? <laughs> 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 no, um, 
I think that you need to look at yourself and see what really you can be comfortable with. I believe that I, I can't prescribe that you should work in this way or you should work in that way. You, we have all been challenged by destiny with something and we must find our answer for that, right? So you have to look at yourself, what you have in your hand, what you're capable of doing. What are some of your weaknesses? Is it possible that you can bring some people along in order for you to thrive and do better? So I think the first thing is to do self-introspection. Know exactly where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, and see what opportunities are there. Then you, 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 you come out. Hello, my name is Ebiko. Um, finished almost 20 years ago. <laughs> um, they, I think I would like to hear you, Ivan, probably some of the older, those who finished um, old before I did, and then the current um, rector of NAFTI um, on some comments from you or some insights from you on the direction that NAFTI, what it gives in preparing young people for industry. because. When I came in, even now, I recommend the place out of passion, but from the experiences I've had. But I also um, wonder whether it's still um, how people, other people see what NAFTI gives as a, a place where people who want to go into film industry come to. And from th uh, the past and currently what it has, just to add to the conversation because we've talked about the individual and then the industry but we also hear because of this common um, factor and I think it's interesting to look at that maybe it gives us makes us think about what we miss and what we should also emphasize we can look at and emphasize we do a double whammy for you <laughs> uh, it's, no, uh, this one I'm pushing to follow up the question is um, then what are we preparing our students for? Are we preparing them to be artists or are we preparing them to be business people? Because when I left in 99, I was an artist and I still think myself as one. I wasn't prepared for the business side of the industry. I had to struggle through and learn that on my own. So my question is, now that we have to try and find, because I think that is what is killing us. That is why most of the well-trained, and I'm putting this in comment with all apologies, well-trained um, directors and filmmakers go out there and they don't do anything because the businessman out there doesn't understand your language. You want a well-scripted project. You want an artist to have a character. You want to build an image. He is thinking, no, I don't think I need a long script. Hey, action, go. That's what he's looking for. You know, but we with our training, we think no. Before this man lifts up his hand to slap a woman, there must be a reason for his action. He's not just slapping because he's an idiot. You know, and that is coming from a poor, a, a pure artist point of view. So how are we preparing our students to go out there and really excel? Because I don't think we are. That's all. In the first question. <laughs> now, um, for me, uh, um, um, when we finished NAFTI, we no then we normally had this uh, um, what a NAFTI film festival, yeah, students film festival, and then we were all brought here to answer questions. I remember this gentleman that was among them, Mr. H. M. Hammond Mensa. And then he said he had a film to shoot. So our first film that we shot was with a, a business-minded person. And we came out as artists. And uh, we wanted expression, you know, like uh, lentil, you know, krakwa. You learn certain things. <laughs> you want to bring them there. The guy is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't, don't come with these things. You know, do you understand? But somehow... You, your confidence, we were confident. We knew we knew our stuff. We were already working when we were in school. We were already working in the industry, you know, like second year I was assistant director to 
while it's Bampo Ado, who was our lecturer. And we were doing other things, shooting commercials, working everywhere. So we understood a bit of the, 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 the industry, how the industry was unfolding. We were then meeting H.M. for the first time. The first thing he did was that he came and said, here are my cameraman, my cameraman, my sound man. You are the director. I said, it doesn't work that way. And I had to explain to him. Okay, and these two guys were at GBC. And um, what scared me was, they said, okay, so we'll just go. And I said, oh, we need about two weeks to do this. So, ah, but that thing is just three days. We'll just do this then. And then we finished. And I'm like, oh, is that so? So eventually I had to call HM aside and said, no, we can't work with these people. Yeah? And then... He said, okay, choose whoever you can work with, but you are the director. I said, okay, so I chose my mates, and then we went to shoot and came back. Same thing happened at the editing bench. Um, they brought an editor who, from GBC, and he was already there before I got there. I'm not saying this to say that GBC, this, no, but it was the attitude. It wasn't that he was not an expert at doing his work, okay? So he said... Ah, haven't you prepared? Where's your first shot? Now, before I would even say, Jack, he's paid, put the first shot. I mean, you know, you need, as an artist, you need to look through and select your stuff based on. Sometimes I say I even work with my mood. You know, if I'm not in a good mood, I won't do it. Uh, you understand that? An artist will walk off the set because he's not in a good mood. He doesn't care how much budget <laughs> that the producer is. You know, but this, so this guy was just tossing me up and down. I think we worked for one hour, and then I said I was having a headache, let's go home. So the next day, I told the HM that I couldn't work with him. So we had to work with yours truly. <laughs> okay? And we did, we were working in the night because I think we always we were students, eh? Hmm? We had just finished, or we were just about finishing. So we were working in the night. We go to work, and then we come back and work in the night. So very, very late. We finished that film. Then the man said he wanted some juju, something at the end of it, and thing. So we said we didn't want our names on it. We were film artists, a white angel, and we didn't want a white angel. <laughs> so we were true artists to the core. Do you understand? So we didn't want anything to do with that film. That does not show what we, we were taught in Nafti. Yeah? Then the film was brought to Ghana Films. And the uh, queue, we saw the queue. Well, like winding like that. And he made so much money. We were like, how? <laughs> how did he do it? Do you understand? That's why in the presentation I said that they are business people who are trying to make films. They are not doing it well. Then there are artists who know how to make the film, but they don't know the business part of doing it. But what is in important is for us to work with them. We shouldn't say that they know nothing about film, so we don't want to have anything to do with them. They have ideas that we can benefit from, and we should not uh, look down on them. Do you understand? So that is, mm -hmm, go ahead. I think that they need our ideas. So I think that we have to make, inv start inviting them in. We must have a, a strategy as to how we can do that. These days in everything they are talking about, like how you build an ecosystem. Because it keeps uh, refueling itself and multiplying. And that is what we need in the Ghanaian film industry. We need to be able to re-energize each other, not play the big fish in a small pond. Do, do, you, do you, you get it? Yeah. So did I answer the other question a bit? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I think that the next um, the panel discussion will give us a broader perspective. 
No, you are not leaving, please. <laughs> so, um, the person to moderate the um, panel discussion, I met her when I was in uh, first year, when we were writing, I think, History of Cinema. And she was the invigilator. She had short hair then. And then, so when it was time here in Ghana, she holds an MFA in cinema from, I ask her, but I honestly can't pronounce it, so I won't even go there, from France. And, um, <laughs> and she's a certified um, avid editor and a lot of things. Please welcome Lorraine. trying to get Ivan's slides off. Let me. Um, we have two other panelists, but Mr. Question. I'm not doing any introduction because the best person to introduce themselves is the person themselves. So they will tell us a little bit about themselves and then they will tell us their contribution to the subject and then the floor is open. So Mr. Jai, do we have a microphone that's Moving? Yes. Okay. I'm Ramesh J. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Three paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did film directing at NAFTI and uh, ended up doing, uh, when I went to work, I started editing, lighting, sound. So NAFTI should pay me. <laughs> and uh, I also did a movie, Six Lovers of Melody, a long time ago. And uh, I'm going to plug my movie, Bad Luck Joe, which is going to come October 5. Um, all in all, I'm a very proud member of CAFTA and the Directors Guild of Ghana. And I'm really happy to be here. Hey, my name is Eugene Odami. Um, I studied film sound production here. Then I studied editing. So I have two certificates from NAFTI. <laughs> then I went on uh, to do my master's in film production and television. But my major was more in uh, film production in terms of the producing and uh, production management aspect of, of, the, of the program. Um, I have worked here so many years, uh, went to the industry worked with Multi TV for six years and I am back here um, as a as a lecturer and currently I head the film artistic department of NAFTI. So basically that's what I can say. Thank you, um, gentlemen. Um, so Mr. Kochiga started the filmmaker, but what we want you to contribute also is not I think Mr. Kochiga that already, but filmmaker also as a content person. So, because you, you Ramesh said that he's done films, he's done series, he's done stuff. So you find that there's a there's a bigger because a filmmaker is an artist. So what we create at the end of the day is not limiting to film as the traditional film, but your TV series, Mr. Kashiga, which is something we'd like to hear because it's also been successful as a content. So we'd like to know that as well. So. What are your contributions in, in a few, maybe a, two minutes per person? What are your contributions to the topic? Okay, I will, I will say, um, fortunately for me, I didn't train here as a director. So it's easier for me to think differently from my, my senior colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, my second deg uh, degree um, opened me up to what producing is all about. Okay, so I will speak from the producing aspect of, of filmmaking. Unfortunately, we don't train producers here. And I think that is, for me, has been the biggest link or the, the missing link in our industry. Because producers are supposed to start
cut the film production. Okay, they may not be the writers, somebody may write, but a producer has to have the eye to know what will make a good film. That is critical. And for me, in that, in that area, that producer should have the artist's eye. Okay, because there are various genres that anybody can do, but that producer will know that this genre will, will hit. Because film is a product, unless somebody ag disagrees with me. It's a product that anybody will make. It's just like this one that somebody has made, it's a product. Okay, somebody, anybody who buys this, buys it to get satisfaction. All right, so the producer, whoever is making this, is making this to get people satisfied with whatever they are taking. At the same time, he has to make money. So for me, the producer, who I consider a filmmaker, is both an artist and a business person. Doesn't this look good? It looks good. So some, a lot of art has gone into it. Any other product that we, we, we have around, even our cars, okay, they all look good because some form of art has gone, gone into it. But you have to make money to be able to sustain the continuous production of it. I'm sure that maybe when we go and come back, I can add a bit more to it. But I believe that the producing aspect of filmmaking, which is lacking here as a training institution, has be, been the biggest, biggest, biggest missing link. Possibly if that is sorted out, the next 15, 10, 15, 20 years, things will, things will change. So that's what I will do for now. Thank you, Mr. I think he held, held that bottle for too long. Did they pay you? <laughs> uh, you know, when you become a filmmaker, first of all, you have to ask yourself, why am I a filmmaker? Before you join a film school, you have to ask yourself, why am I going to a film school? Because you're going to spend like four, four years of your life. So if you're going to invest so much in yourself, definitely you have to get your money out, right? Uh, in the beginning, I would suggest you really concentrate on the art. If you're really good at your work, you've been to a film school and you become a really good filmmaker, there are businessmen who are going to chase you. If you chase money from the very beginning, you're going to have a problem. Then I think you better be a businessman and you identify people you can invest in. Yep. So my, my question to Ivan, you've had success, um, popular TV shows, right? Um, Things We Do For Love and Yellow. In these two instances, because we can borrow this model and use it for a film, how were you able to make it so artistic, if I dare to say, and at the same time commercially viable? that people still want to consume this content. And to date, it's still a reference for most young people. When even characters that played in that, we know them by these series. How were you able to balance these two out? <laughs> well, um, um, I think that, I said that I worked in ad advertising. And um, uh, so we were always working, shooting commercials, we, we, we looked for certain things in our models. Like we, we were looking for people who have screen presence. We want people who um, immediately can turn heads. Uh, like you, as soon as you, you see them, can do that. But the thing about Things We Do For Love was that we did it with, um, uh, it was a, a response to a brief. We were doing an adolescent reproductive health campaign and there was a need to produce a drama series. And so we did a radio drama, which was playing on Joy FM. 
but the calls that were coming in were asking for it to be shown on uh, on TV. So already we had established some following with that. Then what made it uh, successful was that I had the courage to change all the cast who were good for radio but were not good for TV. Do, do, do you understand that? Uh -huh. So that is what I did. So I think apart from uh, Pusha, almost everybody was changed because we were then looking for something that was visually appealing. And so that the first thing is to find that. And uh, once you have that, you already, your foot is already in the door. So I got that. Then you, I, I mean, the, we already had a story. So I would have said you need a really good story. But we already had a story uh, which was working. So we now had needed people who can work in front of the screen. But um, what happened with that too was that nobody in the agency was interested in shooting the TV because there was no money for it from client. So, um, but I was so passionate about it and I wanted to make a difference. And I felt that uh, being in a hole, like doing uh, only advertising was stifling my creativity. So I thought I should do this an opportunity to do shoot film, uh, something relating what I learned. So I offered to shoot at that time. I wasn't even the director of uh, Fry's All Women's Digest. But they would go on set and loiter around, do nothing for a long time, yeah, and come back and say they are shooting an episode for three days. So I said, okay, I offered to shoot it for two days or even a day and a half or something like that. And then the days that were left, I used it to shoot things we do for love without my boss's knowledge. Do you, do you understand? I was so that passionate about it. So I shot, I shot it, and then we edited it. And then during the staff deba, we announced that we were going to show something to them. So we played things we do for love, and then they, 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 they were all in love with it. And they expressed so much interest, and then it died. And nobody cared about it anymore. Because in advertising, you want to know where the, is the money coming from in order to do this. Okay? So then um, we had a meeting I, that I had to attend with JHU again. Uh, so I took it along. We were going to discuss things we do for love on radio. But after the meeting, I asked the client, Would you have, do you have five minutes to watch something? I played it to him again, and then the guy stopped talking about radio, that we are going to TV. Do you, do you understand? And then we went, we, we, we had to go on to TV. So it started with a passion. Uh, I, I was dying to express myself. But then you realize that I, I offered something. I was, I was ready to do it for nothing at that time because I... Not that I could tell that it was going to be a big film, but I just felt that I needed to express myself and do it. And that's I did. And then I think the rest is... Okay. See, the model is effective. We can learn something from it. Ramesh, my question to you is, you did six lovers of melody. And in a few days, I must say it's not a month anymore, 5th October, we'll be watching Bad Luck Joe. And you said something that caught my eye, that as filmmakers, when we leave school, we should follow the art. You haven't done a film then and now. In the context of this topic, we would like to know what happened, Six Lovers of Melody, what is happening in the process of Bad Luck Show, the filmmaker, business person, and an actor. Okay, uh, when I did Six Lovers of Melody, it was like a different era altogether. We were shooting on SVHS, uh, like uh, Avan said, there was only Ghana films and few uh, uh, what video theaters, you know, where they showed brutal films and stuff like that. Um, so the only way of making money was actually to get into advertising and TV commercials. So for me, staying away from movies at that time was strictly a financial decision. 
uh, we hardly had cameras and stuff like that. Right now, people have cameras. You know, the tools of uh, making movies is uh, they're cheaper. They're readily available. So I sort of, um, you know, as a f yeah, I'm a filmmaker. I'm very passionate about film, but also had to make a living. But in the beginning, I had to prove myself before pe people could even give me jobs to make TV commercials. You know, and I did quite a few TV commercials for free. And then people started trusting, oh, okay, he can do TV commercials. And that's how I, I built the whole thing. Now, after 25 years, I realized, you know, with uh, new distribution channels, now today we went to Xylophone, uh, Xylophone View, they call it. Uh, I think now the distribution channels are more. And I think I made a movie, like I started writing last year. And God has been kind to me. So by the time I finish, everything is kind of falling into place. So I think for me, first it was uh, artistic, then financial decision, and now I'm back to like, okay, there are distribution channels, let me make a movie again, yeah. So you'd say then that because of the availability of d more distribution avenues, that's one of the factors that pushed you to make so the film? So it's a business decision, yes. But it started from being artistic, for people recognizing me as somebody who could deliver. Yeah, so once I proved myself, then I've been able to make the decisions that I want to make your experience because you've been in advertising a lot a highly commercial industry what are some of the um, takes that you brought into the decision taking for no spoiler alerts for bad luck show that you think might be helpful for somebody that's um, conceptualizing an idea now? good so you know after having written a lot of commercials mm -hmm. first of all when the when you're writing the commercial you do not know how people are going to react to it a line you just wrote in passing could become a line everybody's uh, reciting, you know. So TV commercials made me realize what is popular or what is, what is commercial. So when I was writing the script for Bad Luck Joe, I kept all these things in mind. So I was actually a, a script writer and a business person while I was writing the script. So I was like, okay, you know, this is artistic, but people are not going to like it. So how can I make it commercial? So maybe I've answered that. You got to be both, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, um, <laughs> Eugene. Um, you've had the um, advantage of working in a TV station where content they buy films and show. Hopefully, um, what what would you say is the role of TV? As a, as a distribution channel also, and the criteria for helping the artists in the business sense. Are you t speaking about film or are you yeah, speaking about, about film. T television? Speaking about film, okay. in, in strictly film, okay. because they, are, they show other films on some TV stations, right? So you think that it will be an uh, avenue for a filmmaker to make the money. Because if I can sell to a TV station, then I can make some money. Yeah, if, if the film is made for TV, mm -hmm. that is a different ball game. Okay. But if it's made for the theater, mm -hmm. Then for me, the first um, uh, channel uh, distribution ch uh, mode or window should be the theater. I will consider television later, far later than in the, in the chain. Because in the theater, people have to make date to come. And when they come, they have to pay to watch. So the more people I get coming to the theater and hopefully paying, the more revenue I get. So when that I've, I've, I have milked money from that situation for a while, then I will later on consider TV. Because TV, if it's um, like um, the um, free to air, once it, I drop it on TV, how many people are going to make time to watch again? Okay, and the television stations, whether we like it or not, they don't have the cash to pay the way we will want them to pay. Okay, so let's make money from the other windows or tiers. Then later on, television will, will come into support. But television is important because in the promotion of the film we want to watch in the theaters, television become very, very important. So they will help advertise 
the, 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 um, the, the movie for people to come and see. And when it has made, made the hit on, at the theaters, the other ch channel uh, or mode of distribution will follow. Okay. So basically, that's what I think. Okay. Um, in th okay, please, please go ahead. But in the audience, we have people who have made films, people who are conceptualizing making films. Please share your share your mm -hmm. thought. The floor is now open. We are all panelists, mm -hmm. and so please let's let's hear your thoughts. Let's hear your views. Yeah, I was going to um, also say something about uh, the distribution. Um, uh, my senior brother mentioned um, xylophone view, right? Uh, this week, we, I'm, I'm trying to be a business person here. Uh, we launched MTN Shots, which is um, a platform for short films. And I think that uh, that should suit uh, our students. The thing about short films is that it, it, it disciplines you. It makes you good at telling a good story within a short time. But then the thing about MTN Shorts too is that as many people sub that subscribe to your film, you continue to make money on it. And um, I've got so many views on uh, uh, YouTube for some of the work we've done that we didn't really make a lot of money. But this, you can just walk into, uh, and people claiming to be owners of productions that we've done, uh, that we had to be battling every day with and you get noticed immediately. For me, I got my break immediately after school when I won an international award with my school film. So, and it's not uh, like every day that we get that maybe. Uh, so if we can concentrate on the shots stuff and, and make the name, it also trains us and also gives us some money. Yeah? Okay, so I know people, I'll start mentioning names. I don't want to put people on the spot. Madam Nicole, your face is turned away. You're my first victim. <laughs> I see divine in there somewhere. Francis Brown, Peter. You've all showcased film recently. Can we hear your thoughts? Nicole, can we please start with you? You you have you are somebody that has been able to um take advantage of distribution. I've seen your your work in Canal like places that are you rarely would see Ghanaian content there and you manage to get it so it means that in expressing your art you've made some business how were you able to navigate that if, if it would help anybody thank you um, so for me I wasn't the artist I wasn't even a filmmaker I wasn't a businesswoman I was an activist I was somebody with a cause um, so I was born in, in Ghana, but all my life I was raised abroad in the States. And any time I saw content that was about Ghana or about the continent of Africa, it was negative. So the activist in me, ever since I was six years old, wanted to do something about that. So yes, I created an African city. Um, but the thing is, because it was a different story about the continent, there were so many other people who also wanted a different story about the continent of Africa. So that, it was a movement, more than a TV show, of all these people coming together and being like, yeah, we're, we're tired. We're tired of the single story of Africa. We want more. We want diverse representation of Africa. We want diverse stories. So for me, it was more about being an activist. I think you, you, you check a point on Ivan's point where he says the business person thinks of something that people need and then uh, creates content for it. Um, anybody else that wants to say something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you think, if you think about what you need, then that gives you a great idea about what others need. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm still waiting. Or oh, I call the names. I know people know. If you reduce this ten decades, it's almost eighteen years. So I know almost everybody here by name. Uh, Peter is hiding. Divine, please, since the mic is closer to you, you you have been a very active filmmaker screening at silver bed and were you thinking art or business and I mean I think if you chronicle your first film to your second maybe we'll see some of the lessons learned as an artist or as a business person okay thank you very much um, for me I think um, when I completed NAFTI the first thing I took out there was to be an artist I didn't think about the business side 
So I, I kind of really focus much on getting a good story. And I think I've kind of received a lot of response from people that have read my scripts. And I would really want to say a very big thanks to my lecturer. Um, is Nyaku, is he around? Oh, he just stepped out. Oh, I wish he could. And then Yao, um, Mr. Yao Pachi, right? Thank you, yeah, for making me to understand that you need to get a good script out there. So when I got out there, the only thing I, I had in mind was to get a good script. And also, I started thinking about directing professionally, trying to get good shots, trying to get good angles to make your, your story what it is. So the business aspect wasn't part of my mind. So my first feature that I did was Slave King, and I thought much about the artistic aspect. So I didn't really have that um, business aspect of how to produce, so I had to get people on board. And when we finished it, I think it went out to become what it had to be, which I don't want to talk about it. But the second one, which was Barbani, also I noticed the producer was more of the, bu the business type. So it actually helped me because then I noticed I wasn't much of the business type. I was much artistic to my job. So he also helped to push it out there and he's been doing well with it and he's going out there. And the third one, which was silence, I was expecting the executive producer to premiere it because at the end I watched it myself and it was fantastic. Xylophone also loved it, but then she wanted her money. I think she, she told me she, didn't, she wasn't ready for the stress to go premiere, do marketing and all these things. She just wanted to give it straight out. So she sold it out to Xylophone and she took it. But I felt like, okay, you know what? I'm being too much artistic. I'm a young guy. I need money. Let me think of, <laughs> let me think of the business side. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's too much because everybody goes like, I think I've been hearing like, okay, Divine is so much of the Hollywood thing, thing, thing like this. We want pak, pak, pak. I'm like, no, I, it's not my thing. But I feel this time around, Charlie, I need money. So my first movie I want to produce is Air Mine. I've already done the press conference and it's so huge. You using the army, the police and fire service and everything. How do you get the money? Charlie, it wasn't easy. I had to go steady online, a whole thing like that. I had to consult some few people. Okay, I got my structures, everything. I had to go to Xylophone and they say, Charlie, it's too huge. We can only give you this peanut. I'm like, Charlie, this is too big. Okay, what do I do? But I'm still out there looking for the funding. And it's quite interesting that what I studied from level 400 film business from Mr. Odami, it's really helped me because I've been able to put my structures well in terms of film proposal and I've placed it out there and I've, you know, I'm kind of getting good response, which I think is actually getting close to shooting that film. So that's my first movie I'm producing. And I know after that, I become the big boy to produce alone now. Thank you very um, much. Let the microphone stay there because I see other face. People are not volunteering. So Alpha, you're on the spot. Um, Alpha, you have worked on, let me count. My fingers are running out. International, when I say international, they are content international um, productions, and you've seen how it goes. What is your take? I don't want to mention the filmography, freedom, all, all those uh, uh, trans, uh, uh, what's the word, transatlantic, yes, films that come, Alpha is, is somewhere in there. You've seen it, and you've seen the results of this film. You've seen the, the kind of budgeting and stuff that goes in. What, what, from an outsider's perspective, is your take on how do they look at these products? Is it art, business? How are they able to match these two together? I think I'll bring it much closer home. I, I studied at NAFTI too. I enrolled at NAFTI in 1999. And uh, my very first film, I, I enrolled as a cinematographer, but my very first film was actually in a capacity as a producer. And it was a program by a UK-based NGO. They called them ScriptNet. And then um, they had to get uh, <laughs> their few directors and people who worked on that film. So they chose writers, directors, producers. And I volunteered as a producer, even though I was in level, I think level 100, NAFTI, at the time. It was a bold decision to make. So I went, looked at the script. I decided you know, the kind of directors I wanted to work with based on the workshop that we had. And I said, yes, I'll produce it. I did all the things that I had to do right, looking at from the books. It was my first experience. And then when we started filming, I realized that, wait a minute. I mean, it's not, it's not according to the books. It's a different thing when you are shooting on the ground. And uh, I had just bought um, a Honda um, two-door, 
which I was so proud of. It's, it's a Honda Prelude. And I was really looking forward to flexing at Nafti with that car. And then I ended up selling that car in order for me to make sure that the film is produced because my reputation was out there. And then I had my lecturers being on, the, on camera for me. And then I had, I mean, a lot of big people who were working on the film. So I had to do everything possibly to make sure this comes out. And that was the first lesson I learned relating to what this story, what we're talking about today, film, either as an art or business. And I realized that, well, I guess, it's not for the faint-hearted. You have to make a decision if you want to go the business way. And uh, since that experience, I think I took a step back and decided I'd rather hone my skills as an artist and then leave the job for business people to work with. So even though I've worked on a lot of works, um, today, if I have to work, I'd rather step forward as an artist and get business-minded people to collaborate with, as Ivan said. You know, otherwise, it's, we have to collaborate. Otherwise, it's just too difficult. Right? Any, any, any contributions? There's a hand at the back. Right. Uh, my name is Zori. <coughs> um, listen to our lectures and uh, our panelists and what they, they are saying to us. Uh, sorry, I am not a student here but I'm a filmmaker in the field, and uh, I have a, a lot of experience as working in the field. But I would love to say that maybe, is it good that as an artist, or maybe Nafti can also inculcate the business aspect of it, so that as a student, when we come to learn from the artist side, and I will learn the business side of it. <clears throat> or we go this way without bringing in the business side. Then, as an artist, after I finish my uh, my education, I go out there and struggle out looking for the business people to work. Which also the business people sometimes they do not understand the the code of ethics that we work as a as an artist. So it becomes difficult with them. So is it good that we bring the business people back to school to teach them also to get a, the code of ethics so that we can relate in each other when we are calling the shots and the business aspect of that? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Eugene has a contribution. Um, I think I mentioned produce, producing as very critical in our business. Um, I had the opportunity of going on uh, an exchange program that NAFTI was involved in. Uh, it was uh, schools from Finland, South, South, Africa, South Africa, and Ghana. And I went to Finland as a resource person. Then I saw this, this book. So I was wondering what it is. This is a student's Producers manual, like a package, like a business plan. This is for a 14 minute production, and it's even for a documentary program. You, you know that, okay? And I went through it and I said, Wow, this is what they are learning as producers at that beginning. With time, I'm, I'm sure they will develop ways of marketing to banks to whoever will finance here will, will finance the production currently most of our our our, our, our colleagues are possibly um producing films from their own own resources and from maybe from friends but if you are looking for a financier outside you have to make a business case for it and to make a business case you need to have a good package, what the business people will call a business plan. And this is a good package. Except that for as, 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 as a school project, there are so many unnecessary information in it. But it is a good package. It's, talk, it's talking about the team, because definitely you need a good team to work with. But you need to convince whoever is financing that you have a team that is capable of Finishing the job and ending, and I'm, I'm happy Ivan is raising this issue of the short short films, 
because you have to make um, 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 a mark in the industry for other people to believe you. If you haven't started anything and finished, who will entrust you with anything? Okay, so you have to start, if you haven't started, start with the short films. Start one and finish. Even if it's, if, 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 even if it's for three minutes, start and finish. Five minutes, start and finish. As you begin to start and finish a pr uh, programs, people will begin to believe in you that when we entrust bigger projects to you, you will finish. And for me, all those people who have gone to that, who went on that program, the NSSE program, Abita is one. Okay, when they come back, they are thinking, their performance, they are, everything is different. Peter is one, I think Bismarck, Bismarck is also one. Um, uh, who? Araba. When they have gone for that program and come back, because of the producing bit that they add to their, their training, they come back and they are business minded. And I, 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 I wasn't surprised Peter is, 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 is producing. And you can see that business-minded um, attitude that he has. So I think that's what I can say to it, to it now. No, I just wanted to make a contribution to this. Uh, you know, before people can even invest in us, I think we have to prove to them that we are really good. Uh, you know, before, uh, just about a week or two ago, we did a small survey amongst ordinary Ghanaians if they watch Ghanaian movies. They don't. They've stopped watching Ghanaian movies. They think our stories are very immature. Uh, the production values are non-existent. So how do we expect bankers or other financiers to come to our aid? I think we have to be blunt and tell ourselves we have to up our game first. We c I've seen student productions from outside which are way better than the professional movies that we've done over here. So I think we are living in a bubble where we think that we are doing our job. We haven't. So I think before we praise ourselves and blame others, I think we have a lot of work to do. Um, um, we almost get into the end. Peter, you thought you were going to get away. It won't happen with me sitting here, never. Um, Bismarck, you're also there. My question, Peter, you know we have a story. Please, don't keep it to yourself. Um, Peter and I have been working together for a while. We fight a lot, but we are still here together. And we, two films, right? Two conversations, art and business. Peter, we'd like you to share the story. <laughs> but I'm, I'm short too. Okay. So um, with me, um, I mean, I completed after 2015, and um, up till about my fourth year, I was thinking of film as an artist. I just have to make it beautiful for people to love. And then I realized that even the short films I did, I invested money, my personal money. So I asked myself, okay, when this money goes in, it doesn't come back, but it's art anyway. And so when I was leaving school, I, I was like, okay, now is the time to get back all those monies that I was investing. And I even produced my first TV series, Master in Three Minutes, which was highly commercial. And it went on TV, which required the, the service of all them, it's the benevolence of sponsors. And so that is also money. And it, it needs to be appealing because those people that sponsor, they look at numbers. And if it has to be about numbers, then it must be commercially appealing to the masses. And so that's where the whole thing started from. And uh, with KTK, when I said, I asked myself, OK, am I going to make comedy or light drama or an intense drama? Of course, it's not going to be intense drama because people want to watch it in their home, not in the cinemas. And so I looked at all those things, and I said, OK, let me just make something very light for people to go and watch, not to think about, because if they want to think, they'll go to the church or something, to, not in the cinemas. And so that's what worked for me. I started thinking of the masses. How do I make a film that appealed to the masses and so I did something that people would love and it worked and God being so good I mean uh, when people like it it will go far and it moved into the distribution uh, chain I mean I had a distributor from South Africa gravel road distribution handling that film and 
it went into a couple of platforms, Questy International, went on, on about nine international airlines, uh, festivals writing and paying me to screen it at their festival, something I don't talk about. And I mean, a lot of other uh, platforms. And I thought, okay, this is commercially appealing, so let me do another one to make more money <laughs> and continue making another movie. And so I did side check gun, which was also highly commercial. And it's been so, so uh, for me, I think that because I have a background of being artistic, that is during school time. And of course, my short film, The Traveler, also won award at Fesparco, which was highly artistic. And so I was blending the two of them. Of course, if the shot is not well-framed, I'll make sure it is well-framed before I, I see what action. So I was blending the two, but at the end of the day, I'm looking at how do I make my money back? How do I make my money back? So yeah, it was a blend for me also. But it has been a blend for me. Okay, there's, um, there's two people, then the panelists, then we can all go and enjoy our Friday. I think we've taken enough of your time. This mark. My name is Bismarck. For me, day one, when I came to NAFTI, um, I think we were the last but one batch who were interviewed. And they asked me, why do you want to be a director? I said, because of money. So number one, money has been on my mind. Even though I know that I had a craft, I wasn't thinking about it too much. Because I know that if I think about the money, I will have some people to work for me and I'll pay them. So it has been on my mind to the extent that I think in, in the class, we're all discussing this. Some of my colleagues, I don't want to mention their names. said, so I'll direct this film, I'll direct this film. I was watching, I said, okay, I will employ all of you. And then you direct for me. They, maybe they didn't understand then. But being in the industry, moving out of NAFTI, I realized that to make a good film, you need money. So I decided to do corporate videos. And then I'm the type that I, I don't want to be seen. I always want to lay back. Some of us want to be seen. So when we do it, it's like we are, we are there. They talk about you and all that. It's nice. But I decided that no, let me be quiet. Stay and then have build myself and build a team. Because as of now, um, some friends come on my set and they ask, why are you not shooting films with all this equipment? And it's not like I rent them we own them and I said we are not there yet even though we shoot short films we should we still don't show it sometimes we watch and we criticize it and we laugh and we put it down so every time Makata is fighting with me that you make me research and I do scripts and we don't show it I said don't worry one day we'll show it so for me if you are from NAFTI I think you should think about film as business the craft is in you all right that's the first reason I'm sure you got admitted here so that you develop it from level 100 to 400. Mr. Yao, Mr. Nyakon, they will teach you what to do. But if you don't have the business mind, you will struggle. You will do one film, two films, it will sell. But maybe in the next 10 years, you might be poor. Because I've seen it. I've seen a lot of filmmakers who are poor now. And I decided that I don't want to be one of them. Okay. So I'm sure it's the same thing, Mr. Kwashiga and Ramesha, they, when they finish, so I've been monitoring them from afar. The last time I met him at the airport, when he was going to Tamale, Tamale to shoot, I was also going to Kumasi to shoot for a corporate body, and we spoke. And I told him I was, I was coming to see him, but I've been always seeing him from afar. And I've, I've learned from them. So I think that if we want to make it, let's see that filmmaking is expensive. It's not a joke. So think about the business aspect first. I mean, that's me. And then I'm sure the rest will come. Okay. Um, Maxwell, you had a point? Okay. We'll take the last point from Maxwell. Then our panelists will sum, sum the stuff. Uh, we keep having more hands. Now I'm confused. Please, organizers, how much more time do we have? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. So, okay. George. Questions. Okay. George and Maxwell. Hello. Okay. Um, George Bosompim. I, I, I have a winding history because I started as an actor, you know, <laughs> going through the mill hall to start, you know, doing things for television and the rest, and I decided I'll come to NAFTI. When I came to NAFTI, it was basically the creative thing that was on my mind, not the business bit. But when I got out of NAFTI, then I saw the reality. Because we, 
we spoke about all these cranes, you know, those days Ghana films, when you go to Ghana films, they see the cranes and all those things over there. And he thought you go out there and go and do something with it. I got to uh, Ghana films, Gamma at that time. And Ashon Katai taught me what the business is. But in, telling, in teaching me how the business was, he put me in a place that I should learn how to do the business. But it started with television. Because TV3 had just come. And we're doing all sorts of stuff and people were running out with those light off days where people were carrying their television to go and watch Acapulco Bay. You know, so I went there and he put me in the marketing department. I said, why? I've come here to work as a filmmaker. How is my going to put me in the marketing you know, department? But then within that period, he had schooled me because I've sat at the feet of, of a lot of directors, you know, directing even Mr. Boachi, Prefon Boachi, and all. I've worked with a lot of directors. And all these directors, I was studying from them the technique, you know, and that is the, 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 the visual bit of stuff, you know, the artistic bit. I was learning that. But when I went to that marketing department, I realized, no, it goes beyond just doing stuff, you know, because there, I was there as a person doing only TV commercials for them because that time people wanted to sponsor programs and they were not getting the, that kind of leverage. They wouldn't go to uh, uh, Ivan's place, Lentas, and they would charge them plenty money. So they wanted a cool way of doing it. So we're doing it over there, week by week, we're turning up. But when you go for the meetings for these things, then you get to know the business of it. So I started learning from there. But my turning point basically were situations where I thought that, oh, at this time, I'm ready to, you know, go out there and do a feature film. I did two feature films, which I never talk about. <laughs> the first one was called I, wanted to be, I Want to Be a Woman. And as soon as we were friends, we put money together, do that one. And one of our colleagues that picked the film, go to an embassy and run away. <laughs> That's my first. <laughs> the second one, the second one happened to be with uh, Albert Kuvodu, Dangerous Numbers. You know, friends come together, do, you know, then the distribution went some way and then gradually he's gone again. Then I said, me, I'm not going to any work. So, I look at the, basically what I did finally was to look at the train. What is it that is happening? And Ashon had given me that tuition and said that look, the next thing that is going to happen is TV series, TV that. So I was going that direction, and he laid that thing for me. I was lucky because he had taken the lead and knew what it was about, you know. So we went into that and we started the colonial court and uh, all those things that followed up to Toko Tro Tro and all those things. And truly, the marketing bit was good. So a program like Talk 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 was roping 35,000, just one showing. It got to 50,000. And people were queuing. And the only thing, the only program that could match up with that was uh, Ephira. And at a point, we just left them behind. So the company collapsed. Okay, thank you. My experience anyway. Okay, Max, so... I was trying to find out some guy's name, the, a filmmaker who died broke. I, 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 Alpha says he's called George Smelie. Is it true? No, <laughs> no he's not. If, he's, if he lied to me then. You know, <laughs> the reason why I wanted to get that guy's name is that if you're a filmmaker and you think it's an art, you don't think about business, you're going to die broke. That's what the guy said. The truth is that if the thing about the art and the business thing is when you think in terms of art being a hobby, you know, like, okay, if it's a hobby, then you, you, you say it's not business. But if, whether it's art or something, show business, you have to think about the business side. I learned it the hard way. The truth is, Nafti will train you um, with a skill. When it comes to the money, you have to use your brain to learn how to make the money. And one of the things I've learned at Nafti is also that, what, what you were talking about, where sometimes you want me to collaborate, because I, when you want to make a film, for instance, if you have a business mind like Bismarck, you have classmates who have the skill. Sometimes the collaboration helps, where if, if I'm going to rent a camera and I realize that a friend of mine has a camera, it makes more sense for me to go for my friend's camera, get him as a cameraman, and then produce with him. But it, it gets to a point where because you haven't thought of um, that collaborative effort, it becomes difficult. Now, I stopped for almost one year, I stopped mov doing movies, anything about movies. I just wanted to go and learn. Actually, I wanted to go to Gimpa. But a friend of mine who has a company asked me to come and work there. So I stopped everything I was doing to go and be uh, the German, general manager of the company. And it blew my mind because that was when people bring you uh, proposals. And you go through the proposals and you realize this is something I will never put my money into it. Simply because the person is thinking of the craft, of the art, talking plenty about 
the movie and what it entails and you are so busy with so many paperwork that you don't even have time to read truth is that we get plenty proposals every single day of different different stations different production companies that the very first page if within the first line i don't see the benefit of it to the company we just you just trash it so as you are here you will never is there, there's no way even with the 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 what you call the producers there's no way you will learn everything here in FT. you have to go and learn it the hard way so i believe as a student what you have to do right from the scratch is that have at the back of my mind you are paying school fees the school fees is money Afterwards, after you finish, you're going to work for money. So if at the very beginning you are thinking of money and how to make, and money making is also an art, by the way. <laughs> so if right, if right from the beginning you think of it as how do I make money? If I want to make a movie, now what I think about is who will want to put his money in my movie? Because as filmmakers, the greatest mistake you make as a filmmaker, which I made, is to have an idea and decide to put your own money into it wrong you all your money will go down the drain but filmmakers thrive when we use other people's money where i have an idea okay who want to put his money in my idea who want to fund it when you begin to think that way gradually realize that money will not be a problem as i could say <laughs> thank you very much okay um thank you um, we'll take a, a final words from our panelists sum up and then the conversation will not end i think they've started something so we'll continue so. right um I am very, very happy with this uh, initiative and also the, the contributions that have come through. Um, the only thing I, I would like to add to it is that we need to, I mean, it's good we are thinking about money. We are artists as well. But then we need, also need to um, look at what is happening in the, in the industry. Technology has turned everything upside down. What is happening in tech now? We have uh, more than almost 28 million cell phones in this country. It's become a channel. There are people that uh, we call in social media influencers who charge us if we have an event. They are able to charge us and, and we put those, they endorse those things for us. It's a form of adver adver advertising that has just started that I believe ad agencies are not even aware of. Now, out of the 28 million uh, mobile phone subscribers, we have about 8 million to 10 million who have smartphones. So if you are looking at the, the numbers and you can attract even half of that on, I mean, uh, a, a film that you can put on a, your, your phone, uh, phones, you can imagine how much, even at 100,000, if each person watches your film for 50 pesos, how much would that be? It will be far more than the film that you would, uh, the money that you would spend on making a film. Now, I also spoke about an ecosystem. I've always been saying, I, I've said it several times, but I want it to, to sink in. Film is a collaborative effort. It is not a one-man show. And uh, problems that we had in the past were mainly because of distribution. Right now, we can show films on channels that we can be sure we can easily tell how many people have viewed and all those things. So we need to do away with the mistrust and be able to work with each other so we can, we can build on each other's strengths and move forward. Then the last thing is last, about last year, uh, somebody from a bank came to me, a Nigerian bank that is in Ghana. And they're looking at how they can support film, the film industry. And the uh, fact, the main question that uh, we couldn't really answer is the return on investment. That is the question that we have to think about. How can we answer that question? And I think the, the points that uh, my brothers have made here uh, are in the right direction. We have to um, also think about how we put our proposals together. These days, people don't read a lot of pages. If you can capture your proposal on one page and make sure you put your the, the, the key issues that will tri uh, trigger. We were trying to put YOLO on uh, uh, MTN found, uh, shorts. We said we had this number of hits here. 
we had this number of it here, this number of it. Immediately they are like, whoa, they, because they are counting the numbers. They are looking at the numbers. How much is that going to fetch us? Even if they, are, they have uh, seven point something million in this, how much will that trans, uh, translate into? So these are cues that we can bring into our proposals in order to attract the investments that we, we want into our films. Thank, Thank you. you for this. <clears throat> I'll, I'll keep it very simple. Uh, the only, only reason why people watch our programs or even support us is if we are telling a good story. So please, 99% of your time, just focus on the story. If your story is good, if you have a good story to tell, everything else will follow. I will also say that um, we have to continue to develop our artist's um, um, mind. Okay, like Ramesh just said, the story is very important. But we also have to develop our entrepreneurship skills. Okay, if you have to go and look for somebody's money, you have to make sense, a business sense to the person. And now we, we can go on the internet and learn how to write um, um, a business plan. Because that's what an entrepreneur will eventually will have to put together to go and look for money from other people. I think it was, I know who said, you have to depend on other people's money, OPM, other people's money. So you have to learn to put together good packages or good business plan that will let us go and look for that money from somewhere. I also want to say that we have to learn to be good managers. So for me, the artist has to be an entrepreneur and also a good manager. Thank you. Okay, I guess um, we've picked up a lot. Art and business are synonymous. They, you can't leave one and follow the other. I don't think based on the conversations we have, you can be a business person and not be an artist as a filmmaker and be an artist and not a business-minded person. I, I will sum up by sharing um, something. Peter did not want to betray that information, but having worked with Peter on KTK and Sidechick, Sidechick we, we fought almost every day. I said, Peter, you're not making this film. It's not, the, it's not what we signed up for. Peter says, let's do this. It's commercial. I said, yes, but you can't sacrifice your art for the commercial. And we fought. And then it got to a point where we said, okay, you would make this film based on these considerations. And the considerations were made. We don't want to reveal too much, but lessons learned. Side check almost seems like it was more commercially accepted. We were shocked because as artists we thought KTK is the, was a kind of film but Sidechick seemed to transcend places that we didn't think it would go and it was also because of some of the business things we had picked up. Um, Mr. Koshiga said it, he said film is collaborative. In the business, in the art, you have to be collaborative. You, you can't be too big or too small to get somebody's attention. So work as a team. There's somebody that has brilliant business plans. There are people that have done things that are successful. Watch them, study them, use it. They may be good. Uh, um, like we've seen business people in this film industry, we did not like the films they produce, but at least we saw how they use the commercial advantage to get people. So if you can take these models and then fashion it properly and remain true to yourself as an artist, I think then we would have found a good balance. We learned also from um, Nicole's point that sometimes you just have to be true to the cause. She wanted to be an activist, but she didn't know that she was being a business person. Because when she made the film, and I remember the first time I saw An African City, I was not even here, and I was like, mm, I want to see this. And say, f flash forward, it's, it's all over. It's because she believed in it. And that means that she saw, she studied the market, what Ivan said, the business model. What do the people want? You provide it, and I'm sure somebody will buy it. That's the same thing Ivan did with uh, things we do for love. They, they, they share similarities. So there's also not one formula to the, to the thing. Just look at the formula. Look at the ones that suit your 
your your abilities and i'm sure ramesh has gone through it all like he's the don that of advertising like ramesh do you feel like <laughs> everybody is scared like bad luck joe's like oh god we are dead ramesh is coming to change the game but ramesh could have done a film anytime he did one he's done like who doesn't ramesh know but ramesh thought that it was important to put some structures in place to make to make the film so I think that at the end of the day this conversation should not end here as filmmakers it will be awesome to see us succeed as artists and as as business people we also deserve those rent cars with the flashy stuff we need to also be slain and not watch people slay and then we are sad because we are counting your coins we we need to be we need to be also not just follow the money but be proud of what we've done we need to see how these things are influencing our society. So I believe that the conversation should keep going. And if we look at the people here, it shows that we are all interested in this. And hopefully, we will get there. It will take time. We will get there. People had to mortgage their houses. But today, Heritage Africa is still here. So, And one thing that I want to sum up, we have a weaker distribution understanding. As artists, we have a very weak, we lent it the hard way. If we are not uh, found Gavo Road, right? They, they are contracts. People show you a contract that says that I'm giving you $10,000 for your, $20,000 for your film. Like, oh, wow. But in the contract somewhere, you're only getting 2000 So we also need, to, that's why it's a collaboration is important. Go to the people who know. If you need a legal person, ask them. How am I going to leverage on this? Go to Ramesh. Ramesh will stay out busy, but he will always have time for you. You say, come tomorrow. Tomorrow you go. It's okay. Oh, I'm sorry, but come the day after. Ivan's doors are open. I'm not saying go and back them, but I, it just shows that we are family and everybody is there to help. So thank you so much to um, Nafti Alumni, the organizers. We all make this association, but most importantly to the organizers, Mr. Boache, Efiadra, no, I'm d we are saying thank you, and 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 yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so and thank you for being good participants. Um, we are just uh, people that were invited. So I'll pass it over to Madam Ifiadra, Chair of the Day, to to say the last. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So you can take your seats now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It feels like there's nothing to do again. They've said it's all. But sometimes when you're doing something, you don't know. Um, no, I won't say that story. Okay, so the last bit is supposed to let us have a good night's sleep. So, um, there are two stories. Ramesh, are you ready to share that story? Yes. <laughs> so, this bit is for us to have a good night's sleep. And um, it's called uh, Stories Worth Sharing. All the stories that happen in Nafti whilst we're here. <laughs> Ramesh will be the thing. I just remembered one. Uh, so, it was a final year production, and uh, I was a production manager for Nida J. Wapia. And uh, it was the last day. We were somewhere in Achimota, and one of the actors didn't turn up. So now I had to look for this. It was an elderly gentleman's role. So <laughs> I had to rush to art center and get somebody. I, he just looked the part, so I said, you, you come, let's go, let's go. We reached the location. So from art center, we reached uh, Achimota. And Nida gave her, gave, she looked at the guy, said, oh, yeah, this, this guy's really good. You know, let's use him. Then she gave him the paper to read. And he said, he doesn't know English, you. <laughs> you, you said it in Shui, of course. But, yeah, so we just had to change the dialogue and just make him nod and, you know. But we learned, we learned an important lesson that, you know, filmmaking is more about actions rather than dialogues. So, yeah, even when you're writing scripts, please keep your dialogues to a minimum. I see plenty movies with plenty of dialogues. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Boache. So he will also give us the closing remark. <laughs> I'm sure some people want to share some stories. Please, if you have something that will make us.
have a good night's sleep. Raise your hand and we will call you. All right, thank you. Uh, um, I'm beginning to look like a veteran here, but somewhere in the early 90s, I got the opportunity to direct a uh, documentary film for Voradep. It was a Nafti production. Before then, I had had the opportunity to shoot a documentary for you on bees somewhere in the uh, Brown Half region, in Kranza and Boabin Fiema. And because of that, I had done a lot of research about bees, what they like, what they don't like, when you have to approach them, how you have to approach them. And then we had this whole year project to do something on agriculture for the Volta region. That was a World Bank project called Voradep. And the last day of shooting was another incident with bees. So the night before we went to shoot the bees, I told my crew, these are the things the bees do not like. So please, don't do that before we go. Don't use perfume. Don't put a pomade. Don't even bath if it's possible because the soap has beeswax in it and it attracts them. So let's wake up very early. The bees move with the sunlight. Without the sun, they can't operate. So let's go early. Let's finish by 6 o'clock so that we can come back in one full piece. Don't wear black. Don't wear red. And please, don't make loud noises. <laughs> bees don't like that. And I think when you have a habit, you just can't stop. So if you are used to waking up in the morning and taking a bath, it, it just comes naturally. And some of us forgot that, and I think they woke up and they, they went straight and took a bath. So we went to a location. <laughs> Fenuku was a cameraman. <laughs> and uh, Philip Kenya was a lighting man, and uh, uh, Mr. Emisa was a technician. I was directing, and uh, I think Mr. Kwe, the late Mr. Kwe was a sound man. I told the driver that, look, keep the doors of the car open. <laughs> if you see us running, start the engine. <laughs> so, we were shooting, and somewhere along the line, Fenuku started stamping his feet. <laughs> I said, Fenuku, please. <laughs> he said, you're chopping me. <laughs> the next moment, the bees just came out from the hive. We took off. <laughs> we left the equipment, everything. <laughs> we went into the car. And when you are afraid, again, you do things, you know, just on the spur of the moment. Bang the door, the driver took off. We went about three kilometers before we realized that Mr. Emisan was not with us. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we had to turn around and come back. And we met Mr. Emis on the way. And you... <laughs> so we have to quickly rush him to the hospital for them to give him some injection. And then came to sit around the place for about an hour. And then quietly he went to pick our equipment. <laughs> and left. So this is to tell you that when you are doing research for your story, don't just stick to the story. Do research about the things that you're going to do because you never know when you have to deal with bees. Thank you very much. Okay, so I guess we've come to a conclusion for today's activity, and so I'll, I'll just sum it up. <laughs> so oh, this kid is a student thing. So <laughs> let's go. I think that... Uh, we have to give ourselves an applause. We ourselves for listening to the panel. They've done a good job. And uh, at the end of the day, you are not too sure whether you should be an artist or a businessman. As Jimmy Cliff said, there are more questions than answers. The more you learn, you realize that the more you have to know. So we have a lot of work to do. Somewhere along the line, Ivan talked about the fact that somebody, a banker, had approached him. Indeed, last year, one of the students who came to do certificate course here said he was coming from the bank. He wanted to study film so that he could prepare a portfolio so that people, they can actually give money to people who want to make films. But then the question is, again, how is the returns going to come? If you ask any filmmaker today right now in Ghana to find out about how much money they make, everybody is trying to shy off. 
I know that there are several attempts, or at least few attempts by filmmakers to actually go and make money, go and get capital from the stock market. But if you want to go on stock market to make money, you should at least show five years of your books. There should be a certain amount of transparency. Now, if you are not prepared to open up for people to know the numbers as to how much money they can make, nobody's going to give you their money. So it is another area that reflects on what Mr. Odami says, production, so you have to have the full information out there for people who want to participate. So perhaps this will form the basis for another lecture when we get the opportunity to, get, to talk about, to p organize this thing again in the next quarter. The idea is for us to be able to do this every quarter. So somewhere around perhaps November or December we'll meet again and maybe we'll come up with another topic. But I would like to take the opportunity to thank Nafti very much for giving us this, this platform. Uh, anytime we call on their doors, perhaps. Uh, they, this one instance that friends and family is working for us. <laughs> Our own is handling the place, so hey, if he doesn't, if he doesn't give us a place, we'll meet him behind the window. Out there. <laughs> so we thank Nafti very much. We thank the crew. We thank all the facilities that they've given us to help this day come up. We also thank um, the NAFTI people from coming. I say that alumni currently is a, forms a triumvirate. We interface with ourselves, and then we interface with the students. But more importantly, we interface with other people in the industry. And so we are very, 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 very appreciative of other people who are here today but who are not necessarily NAFTI graduates who joined us. We appreciate that very much, and we are hoping that you participate more and more every time these things come out. Because even though it's being organized by NAFTI, the intention is to have an effect on the whole of the industry. So we thank you very, very much for coming. GAFTA has been most helpful to us, even as alumni, because many of us join girls that have GAFTA as the umbrella body, and they are ever ready to help us. So at this point in time, I guess that on, my, on behalf of myself, and of course the indefatigable Efia, who can't sleep at 2 a.m. So at 2 a.m. He, he will send you a, a beep to see if you are also awake. <laughs> and then the combination, and the questions are flowing, the questions are quicker than the answers. But somehow we get around it. The people's servant, Nana Koba, anytime we are in trouble, <laughs> we need somebody to do rounds for us. He's the one who fall to and he will happily and graciously do it for us. And of course, the executive of the alumni who you know, helped guide us through this situation to bring us today. We thank you all very much for being here. And hopefully, three months, two months from now, we'll be here again talking about other topics. And maybe the audience will be bigger. Thank you for coming. Thank you.